What's up everybody? Welcome back to a brand new video on Lexa Lexus. Today I'm going through last weekend's fixtures from the championship in my own personal review. We're going to break down all the games that took place and my reaction and my opinion on all of those. A lot of things have taken place. We have had one manager departure already. Manager number 14 has now been dismissed for this championship season. It just feels like it's never going to end and we could definitely get over 15 managerial sackings before the end of the season and I need to look about the world record because I'm telling you this out of all my years doing championship YouTubing it just feels like that this season has had way more managerial sackings than any other season we've also got five midweek games to predict as well of course tonight we are going to see Watford play West Brom so that will be interesting in terms of building up for that game as well. The prediction leagues are currently actually up to date. The Premier League one has been finished in terms of this game week. The Championship one, I'm still holding out because obviously we still got this game. And we've got a five further midweek games to calculate as well. After those six games, I will be able to show you an update for both of the prediction leagues. But I've been pleased that I've actually kept on top of it. So if you guys like what you see, please give a video a like. It does try to help this growth of the channel. It really does. Please do hit that subscribe button. It really does help the growth of this channel. 30 likes is the target. And we were just short of 30 likes on my last score predictions video. But that was down to some technical problems I'm going to put it down to. I'm hoping, fingers crossed and knock on wood, that there's going to be no issues this time. But I cannot guarantee it. I can really just hope that my computer actually obeys itself and actually does the editing to the way and the quality that I want it. Please also share the video if you like what you saw as well. It does really help. My socials are also down there as well in case you do want to follow for any more of my life. But without any further ado, let's start breaking down my reaction to all of the championship weekend games. Friday night's game saw a crucial win for Cardiff City with a 1-0 victory over Reading. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that is Cardiff's first home win since October, which is unbelievable to know that Cardiff will win this at home for over four months. It really puts into perspective how poor their season really has been. But now it's two wins in two games for Cardiff. They've definitely given themselves a fighting chance and some breathing space within the bottom three. And maybe slowly but surely dragging Reading into that relegation stress. You can see with the attack momentum there, it was mainly Cardiff probing and Reading not really asking many questions. Let's break down the stats. 19 shots to 5, 0 shots on target for Reading. That's been a good couple of games where Reading have really struggled to even find anything on goal. So very, very disappointing in that front there. And it did look like from the stats there that Cardiff did deserve something. So I'm a bit more pleased for them than they did manage to get something. It was a Remain Soyuz goal and it was a goal from just outside the box. And in terms of a shot itself, it looked pretty well struck. Took a couple of bounces, maybe a deflection or two on the way in. But it is a goal regardless, just not of the cleanest of quality. But Cardiff will take that any day of the week right now. Because as you can see right there, they are up to 20th, but with those two wins in a row on 35 points, they've given themselves a four-point gap. They have played the game more, but with that four-point gap, it means that bottom three, and of course Rotherham just below them as well, have got to produce good results in order to put pressure back on this Cardiff team. Reading, you can see they're in 16th, only one win in five. On 41 points, so a decent amount of points that Reading do have. But with it only being 10 points off the bottom three, they're definitely not 100% out of it yet, in my personal opinion, especially if they keep on with that um, trajectory of form. So I think Paul Ince would want more consistency on the road because they've really, really been struggling with their away games all season. And it's really shown in this one. The Cardiff, with their home games, they've been struggling with them, but they've managed to find a win. And I'm pleased for them in a way because I think Lamucci is now starting to improve performances with this Cardiff team. 
and maybe now they it was a master stroke to potentially get him in within this amount of time because now Conor McGinnis has a fighting chance. We're having twists and turns off the top three. So this 3-2 win for Millwall, a great result for the London team, by the way. It sees Millwall in the top six, of course. A great response after their 1-0 midweek defeat against Coventry. But look at this here. With Middlesbrough winning this weekend and Sheffield United losing two games in a row now after they had an over 10 game unbeaten run, they are now only four points clear of Middlesbrough. They do have a game in hand, however, but with their performances, it's not a guarantee that Sheffield United are picking up maximum points. I mean, for what I saw within the highlights and the stats, as we are going to see, Millwall had more shots, they had more chances, they had the same amount of shots on target, but for me, for what it looks like, in terms of the quality of chances, it was very, very close, but it was Millwall who were more clinical, but more specifically, Tom Bradshaw. I mean, he had a 9 rating. I don't know what more Tom Bradshaw could have done to warrant a 10 out of 10 rating. He dragged Millwall to three points here. Three goals, three points. He was definitely the man of the moment. And I need to look back because he's definitely on course for a perfect hat-trick because one of his goals was a header, but I didn't see if he scored um, the other two goals on the same third. But if not, that would have been a perfect hat-trick for Tom Bradshaw. It's his second hat-trick as well this season as well. And I think it's goal 10 for Tom Bradshaw now this season. Mill, as I said, sixth place. And I've got to say, I think they've been under the radar a little bit. And I think Mill are going to be suited with that. With Sheffield United, they've got a really, really tough couple of games coming up, actually, Sheffield United. So do do Middlesbrough. But that consistency between Sheffield United and Middlesbrough is going to be very interesting. We saw how close Nottingham Forest were with a miraculous unbeaten run they went on and they just fell short. Is it going to be another similar scenario that we see potentially with Sheffield United and with them playing against each other? Is it going to be a matter of that game deciding who gets promoted? I really do hope that we're going to reignite some drama with the promotion places because it really is the most crucial part of the championship table and at one stage like one or two weeks ago it did look like that the promotion places were already sealed by early february so now that we're seeing this really does show how unforgiving the championship is when you have to be so consistent for a really long period of time with a big big schedule of games and Sheffield United are really struggling with that at the moment but Millwall Great response for them, and honestly, who knows where they can go. They've got also a pretty tough run, but they go top six. What a role and job that Gary Rowett is doing with his middle team so far. A rare win for Blackburn, as it seems, as they managed to beat Swansea by one goal to nil. You can see they were struggling for draws all season, and then you see with this form here, they've had four draws in a row, which has actually been their only four draws in 32 games this season. So... Whilst they've actually stayed unbeaten for quite a fair um, good period of time, they've just not been picking up three points. They did so here, and because of this, they actually are still within a shout still of the top six, even though at some point it did look like that Blackburn were completely um, hopeless and just not being able to secure that top six place and not having enough consistency there. Swansea still stay within the top half of the table, which surprises me based on their goal difference. But if you look at this here, three defeats in four matches. It definitely felt like a bit of a letdown considering they won um, against Blackpool in midweek. This was definitely a very disappointing result for them. Daniel Ayala scoring an 89th minute headed goal, which definitely could have been defended better in my opinion with the build up of it. You can see that Swansea asked more shots, but Blackburn looked more clinical with three shots on target to their eight. They are actually using what actually gave Blackburn such a good lead at the start of the season, which was them taking their chances from actually doing so little within the game. So if they're going to find that sort of form again, Blackburn, I think they could potentially try and shock people. But in terms of performances, I still think teams around them a bit higher up are probably going to be a bit better off than what Blackburn are. I think they might fall short of it. But they can easily prove me wrong. You know, we've seen a lot of teams finish in the top six that no one of us would have ever expected. And I think Blackburn could be one of those teams if they play their cards right and they stay as clinical as they were. Swansea hit the woodwork and I actually remember it was from a set piece and just a header, which was really, really unlucky. So 
potentially a draw they could have got Swansea on another day but definitely their form at this moment of time is really really poor and right now we've seen how ruthless the championship can be if they don't pick this form up I mean when you think about it I was just saying Reading could potentially be in danger with their poor form with them being 10 points off Swansea are only one point above this Reading team so it just goes to show you how the bottom half of the table is actually really really tight so it's definitely going to be interesting to see the next couple of games flow by. Are we going to now start seeing gaps? Or is that bottom half of the table going to be even closer than what it already was before? So definitely can't assume anything in my opinion. Maybe apart from Burnley winning the championship. But with everything else, you can't assume anything. Just a tide can turn in a season so quickly. And we've seen it with so many teams. And... Blackburn will see if this is a turnaround for their season. For Swansea, they've really got to start picking up their form anytime soon because it's really been a poor couple of weeks for them. Blackpool with a really big win against Stoke City gives themselves a fighting chance. I was talking about um, Cardiff having a fighting chance. Blackpool, I've got to be honest, I was really, really nervous that Mick McCarthy was in charge for a sustained period of time and still not picking up a win. This right here was definitely... A win that they would definitely take because Stoke were throwing so much at Blackpool. I saw the highlights and some of the chances they were missing Stoke. I could not believe in my own eyes, especially there was a couple from Will Smallbone, which I felt he should have done better with. You can see here 25 shots to seven. And we don't normally see Stoke actually attack and pepper a team this much, but it happened because Blackpool got an early goal within the game a bit of a deflection with that goal as well so it wasn't a clean as a strikes but the ball found itself in the net it was Ian Paveda who took credit for that goal I mean obviously he wasn't the one who deflected it but he took the shot but after that I mean yeah I think that would count as a shot on target because it's not a known goal so that deflected shot for Paveda was Blackpool's only shot on target in the entire game. It's incredible, really, that they managed to survive this onslaught from Stoke there. And that can be really crucial. Sometimes they need to ride their luck and to get these points. I still think defensively, there's still a lot to be improved. But it's clear to me they've worked on managing the game when they've taken the lead. And that is one crucial element that they, if they can get right, they are could potentially afford to not be completely flawless within their build-up play yet. So they're definitely prioritizing the right areas. It's now seen if Blackpool can stay consistent, get these shock wins, or maybe even pick up a couple of draws here and there. We're seeing how little is separating that bottom of the table. If they could just carry on as they are, they might be okay, but it's really gonna be very competitive, you know, especially now that We've got another experienced veteran manager with another relegation team with Neil Warnock and Huddersfield. I think it's going to be very interesting for Stoke. Despite picking up a really good win against Huddersfield in midweek, I mean, this was disappointing. But I do think Stoke on another day would have picked up a good result there. Definitely not safe yet, but for me, I think Stoke will be fine if they can shift their mentality in a positive way. I felt we were just unlucky. It's not our day. And what I would hope, because they do have a midweek game actually, Stoke, that they can use that motivation and really, really go for three points here. Because I do think there are some things improving with Stoke. I just don't think it's a smooth process. Well, it really hasn't been a smooth process for Stoke at any time when they've been in the Championship, let's be honest. Speaking of Neil Warnock and Huddersfield, he picked up his first win as Huddersfield boss. And it was the first home game as well for Huddersfield Town. With a 2-1 victory over Birmingham, it was a score prediction I actually got spot on. If you see the stats, however, you can see that Birmingham did ask more. But once again, the home team, despite asking less shots, were a lot more clinical. And actually, that is an over 55% accuracy with shots on target compared to their total shots. With contrast, on the other hand, for Birmingham, their accuracy is under 33%. So... This is definitely a big, big contrast um, there. So definitely the quality of chances, the efficiency um, of creating clear-cut chances. And I think that is what Huddersfield managed to take to their advantage, taking their advantage for the fact that Birmingham, despite Deeney scoring very early on, 
they weren't clinical whenever they had other chances. The other goals came from Hungbo and Jaden Headley, two players I have really, really not looked at at all this season, to be honest. But they could be two heroes that could see Huddersfield go into a positive way out. Now that they picked up that first win, Huddersfield with new manager Neil Warnock, their third manager of the season, of course. Is it too little too late, potentially? I don't know, really, to be honest. I still think at the moment we can't make any conclusions. It's so close in that bottom half of the table that any stretch of form, if any of these teams have a really, really difficult run of games, they could be in trouble. But I genuinely think it's going to be really, really interesting to see what happens. And I wouldn't call it right now. Birmingham, they're definitely in the mix of it as well. I mean, if you see here, you know, they picked up those two great wins there, but the other games have been defeats, really, which have been really, really disappointing on their part. So Birmingham proving to be quite frustrating, you know, not having that consistency because I could see how well they played. I watched them play against West Brom and look unbelievable, but then they follow that up with a performance like this and it is really puzzling. So I think Huddersfield are on their way up, but for Birmingham, they really need to try and sort out their consistency issue. Hull and Preston, that stadium MKN, it ended as a nil-nil draw. I mean, let's try and make this as brief as we can because I've waffled on with many of the other teams that have actually had goals in their games. Zero shots on target for Preston, four from Hull City and having 15 shots. So they actually had double as many shots as Preston there. Maybe based on those stats, it's another game where Preston have actually not lost. It's two draws in a row for them now um, against teams wearing Orange and Luton and Hulls respectively, but it is another two games where Preston not picked up a win and Preston are struggling a tiny bit. You can see they picked up that one win there against Birmingham, but since then it's been a very, very poor form and they are in that kind of mediocre mid-table position. Hull, you know, around in a similar position there. I mean, nothing could really separate these two. Hull and Preston fans, what do you make of your season? Hull definitely on the up, Preston on the down a little bit you know used to defend pretty well and you know it, it, it'll be a positive for Preston that it's a, it's a clean sheet in their season and actually Freddie Woodman's up there actually for picking out one of the most um clean sheets actually for any goalkeeper this season but their position the table being a 14th is definitely a position that they feel that they should be in a higher place a very harsh defeat on Luton Town's part as they lose to top of the table Burnley by one goal to nil from an Ashley Barnes penalty. Oh dear me. I mean, all the action happened in this tiny little spell here. You see Tom Lockyer getting a yellow card and Ashley Barnes converting the penalty. Tom Lockyer losing his head by the looks of things and getting a second yellow and red carded there. I don't know if Lockyer managed to concede the penalty or for the fact that he just got into the referee's face and dismayed about the decision there. Look at the stats here. Look how close it was. Nine shots each and not many shots on target. Three shots to two. Five shots on target to three there. Based on what I've seen here, I think a draw was fair. Really, really close. And I think what Burnley have managed to do, they've managed to turn a really, really close game and still get three points out of it. And this Burnley team are on a ridiculous roll. Their points per game is averaging just under 2.5. If I can do the quick maths correctly there. They definitely, if they carry this on, should get up to 100 points. I think the other recent champion that has a very similar points per game at this stage is Wolverhampton Wanderers, which obviously they tailed off when they got automatic promotion confirmed. Are we going to see that maybe with Bernie? I don't know, potentially, but it's really down to mentality of this team. Luton, despite a defeat, are still in fourth. And I've got to say, that really gives credit to Luton for the fact that even with a defeat, they still stay in the top six. And... They've got a lot to be proud of there. I actually thought they were really, really good. I thought, and it was just a shame for them that they didn't manage to get anything out of this game because definitely all the fundamentals were there. They just couldn't get the conversion right and they just couldn't be efficient enough when they were called upon to try and score a goal. Middlesbrough just still find a way to win even if they're not playing very well. And that's what it looks like in that game there against QPR as they win by three goals to one because you can see at the start here it was QPR that actually started out very very well half time it looked like that it was non-eventful but second half it did feel that Middlesbrough slowly but surely started to get into their stride and who else but Tuba Apple scoring two goals this season I think he scored over 21 goals now this season now Tuba Apple Ryan McGree scored the third goal for Middlesbrough with Ilias Chair, getting a brief moment of hope for QPR, but 
that goal from him definitely came at, at too late of a stage and the fact that Riley McGree even scored three minutes after that meant that it was definitely false hope for QPR's part there. If you look to stats, 12 shots to 10, 9 shots, but to only 2 on target. And that's a real concern. Now, obviously, after this game, what has happened is that Neil Critchley and his assistant have left QPR. So QPR are looking for their second new manager to take over since they were first at the table at the start of the season with Mick Beal. This was a disastrous appointment, to put it lightly. Only one win for Neil Critchley in his 12 games in charge for QPR. That is a horrific run of form, really, to be honest. And I think QPR have acted in a way that they feel if they don't change managers soon, they could get relegated. And if you look at this here, one win in um, 17, I think the form was in the end. That is relegation form, four defeats in five. And they are not far away from the bottom three, only separated by eight points. You know, give it a couple of game weeks saying QPR would be fighting for their lives. So definitely it's felt like that the owners just like lost the faith with Neil Critchley, Sally. And it's a shame because I think he's a talented young manager, but I think the situation at QPR just felt like it was a really difficult one. His, clearly his approach didn't really click with the players when some were away from the World Cup and some coming back as well. It's going to be difficult to get them back up to speed as well. But it just did not work, unfortunately. But on the other hand, man uh, Michael Carrick, being manager of Middlesbrough, proved to be a manager of Masterstroke right now. Three points again for Middlesbrough, despite not playing well. And the gap is only four points. Yes, Middlesbrough played a game more, but that definitely makes things a lot more exciting for a neutral fan to see if anything could come out of this. I really, really hope that we get some drama in the top part of the table. And right now, it seems that Middlesbrough are really, really trying to ignite anything there. Really reminding me of Nottingham Forest's brilliant form last year in the Championship. Rotherham and Coventry played out a pretty good game between each other there, but it was Coventry that picked up the 2-0 win for their part. Now, I was saying that Coventry actually were up there for having one of the worst away forms in the league. And you can see that they still only picked up 16 points there. You know, if we take those three points away, Coventry would have been on 13, and they would have been in the bottom three, actually, in terms of their away form. So the fact that they did pick up that away win and their fourth away win all season, it now sees them in a much better position. They're three wins in five, you know, not consistent, but kind of like what you would typically expect for a mid-table championship team, which is definitely a bit more of a familiarity of this Coventry team. But top six is not impossible. They are only four points off Mirwall having played a game more. So it's definitely not an impossibility for this Coventry team to potentially get um, top six fortune there, but they would lead a lot of consistency. The goals came in from Jamie Allen and then Guillaume Carres finishing the scoring off to make it 2 0 when Rotherham overcommitted and just left too many gaps, and Guillaume Carres finished them off there. Look at the stats there 11 shots to 8, but only one shot on target. So Rotherham being another team that have been really poor with their shot accuracy and under 10% shot accuracy there with direct contrast to um coventry's six shots on target in eight i can definitely do a quick mass on that one that is a 75 percent accuracy there which is incredible honestly so the stark contrast of being clinical is what has given commentary those three points there rotherham now with those those two defeats in a row you can see they're only two points above the bottom three having played the same amount of games and they looked really, really comfortable one stage. So I definitely think it's squeaky bum time for Rotherham now, if they, especially if they don't pick up a win in the next two, three games. I could see Rotherham really slipping away. And it's a shame because I definitely felt at the start of the season, they showed this promise. They showed Rotherham that they can potentially compete in this season. But I just don't think they've got the mental stamina and performance value that they can sustain it. I think that's the thing, it just lacks sustainability. It's got good moments and good moments of flair, but being sustainable is also as doubly important, if not more important. And unfortunately, I just think that is what's happened to Rotherham's performances. Sunderland and Bristol City ended as a 1 1 draw. Two informed teams going up against each other here. Sunderland with a pretty um, early goal in the second half. It was Jack Clark. 
that got the opening goal in that game. And it felt like that Sunderland were just continuing with their brilliant form. But Naki Wells, with a 93rd minute penalty, manages to keep Bristol City's unbeaten run going and denies Sunderland all three points. A pretty cruel way for Sunderland to drop two points. But if you see from the stats there, 11 shots to 9, 3 shots on target to 2, you can see maybe a path of possession, all the rest of the stats were really, really, really close. And Bristol City hitting the woodwork as well. So you felt that with the chances and the quality of chances that Bristol City deserved something out of this. So by the looks of things, it looked like a really, really close game. Sunderland, fifth. And Bristol City down to 15th. I mean, yes, they've got the same amount of points as Reading. But the difference is, I'm saying Reading are in danger based on their form. With Bristol City being unbeaten for quite some time. And we know how long they can keep those good streaks going. I have no concerns for Bristol City and with Sunderland, for the fact they're still in the top six now, it's incredible. I mean, what a season Sunderland are having. And what a viral moment we saw with Luke 09 drawing that foul, by the way. Final game to go over, Wigan and Norwich. It ended nil-nil. Now, you may think, oh, with our attack momentum there, it was Norwich. That, you know, they were unlucky. You know, Wigan did well to grind out for the point. Stats tell you otherwise. 11 shots to nine. Six shots on target for Wigan to Norwich's one. They only had one shot on target, Norwich, which is unbelievable. I could not believe that. Wigan missing two big chances. And I mean, considering that we saw Blackpool and Huddersfield both win, it's meant that Wigan are falling back to the bottom of the league. Mahoney's done well since he's come in. He, they've not lost um, since he's taken over Wigan there. So keeping a good unbeaten run going but they've only won one game since taking over which you know was a big one against Huddersfield but since then with them having three draws in his three other games Wigan if they're not careful you know what's a draw is not a loss at this point you know you really got to be trying to go to win any winnable game you've got when you're in that bottom three and unfortunately I just see Wigan tailing off a little bit but I really hope I'm wrong because I do think They've got some good players in that team. I just think maybe there's a lack of confidence going forward at the moment. They're not scoring too many goals. And with them having the quality of chances that they have and missing those big chances, I think that can be a big problem. And it's something that I hope Mahoney could deal with. But Norwich, on the other hand, I mean, I don't know what's going on with Norwich, to be honest. They had a good response um, beating Hull uh, 3-1 in midweek. But this game here was completely out of sorts for Norwich. And... They don't look like a team for me that I actually think they could go to top six. There's no doubt with the team they have, they should be top six. But whether they perform consistently enough to get into the top six, I don't think they can, you know. I think them and, you know, we'll see about West Brom tonight. But whilst they've got the teams to be in the top six and they have had those good forms, right now, they're not giving me enough faith that they will be in that top six. I see... Sunderland and Luton and especially Middlesbrough have been a lot more consistent there and then it's just a toss up to see who else is going to be more consistent enough to get that final top six place so it's definitely going to be really tight and really competitive in that part of the table which I love you know it's going to put that area of the table down to the wire but definitely with the quality that Norwich have they should be up there but for me I think they definitely need a season to recover this hangover that they currently got and they need to go again honestly so guys that covers my review definitely very waffly but that's just part of my presentational method so in terms of the table Burnley and Sheffield United still top but only a four point gap now between Sheffield United and Middlesbrough the top six is made out of Luton Sutherland and Mill returning back up there with a brilliant win over Sheffield United then for the bottom half the table and the team's in danger, I mean, I did say the bottom half, but definitely shortlisting a couple of teams. I think from QPR downwards at the moment, definitely the teams I would keep my eye on to see if they could fall into the relegation mixer. And the bottom three in a different order now, Huddersfield 22nd, Blackpool 23rd, and Wigan fall back down to 24th. So guys, that is my review done. Before I end my video today, I'll go through the five score predictions for midweek which will take place tomorrow 
So let's go with Blackburn versus Blackpool first. A bit of a local derby between these two teams. Blackburn picking up a good home win against Swansea. Blackburn picking up another brilliant win at home. Another 1-0 win as well. This time also against Stoke City. Now, for me, with Blackburn drawing more games recently, Blackpool robust enough and getting good results um, on the road. And we go 1-1. And it'll feel like a real desperate point for Blackpool. I definitely think they'd want three, but I think they will get one each, in my opinion. So I'm going to go 1 1. Mill, Burnley. Now, I said that I think Mill get underestimated, but I think Burnley, for me, are the best team in the league by a country mile. And I think they will find any scenario to pick up a win. I was thinking 1 0 Burnley, but I'm actually going to go 2 0 Burnley. I, I just think with the options that they've got, I think they'll outrun Mill a little bit here. Norwich and Birmingham. Two teams out of form, in my opinion. Norwich had a good response in their last midweek game against Hull City um, following a poor performance in the weekend. So maybe this could be another good response for Norwich. Maybe they've got that bounce back ability a bit more effective than what Birmingham have at the moment. They have picked up a couple of injuries as well. I'm going to go over 2 1 Norwich in that game there. Rotherham and Sunderland. I'm a lot more confident with Sunderland at the moment. Rotherham are not scoring enough goals, in my opinion. Sunderland are still scoring goals, despite losing their top goal scorer to injury. I'm going to go 1-0 Sunderland. And finally, Swansea Stoke. This felt like a 0-0 draw written all over it. But I said that Stoke really should go for this game, following how unlucky they were not to get anything against Blackpool. And I think, if they are doing that, I think playing against an out of form Swansea team I think they couldn't think of a better team to play up against if I wanted to do that to be honest I mean no one nil Stoke but I wouldn't rule many of these teams out getting something you know I would have ruled Mill out getting something against Burnley I wouldn't rule Rotherham out getting anything there you know I just think it's really really close this year and honestly who do I know you know I'm not top of my own prediction league so I'm definitely trying my best when it comes to predictions. So guys, that wraps it up for today. And actually, I'm really feeling quite proud of myself because the last couple of times I've done my review video, I recorded it in one in the morning. Right now, it's just before 11 p.m. So I might be able to go to bed just before midnight, which will give me about six hours sleep before I need to leave for work. So definitely making some good progress with my schedule it's still not perfect yet definitely something that i want to try and like a redo of my resolution is to improve a schedule that's going to force me not only to have a healthy work style but to have a healthy lifestyle as well because physically and um definitely mentally have been just abusing myself with too many things on my plate definitely need to try and strike that balance so Honestly, feeling good after this one, and I'm hoping for football purposes at least that we'll still continue to see some brilliant developments going around. The championship is definitely delivering as it is. So if you guys enjoyed the video today, please give the video a like. It just from how 30 likes, probably a bit ambitious, but we definitely can achieve it. You guys can definitely smash that goal. Please do hit the subscribe button if you're not done so. It does really help. We're trying to get to 2,000 subscribers. We're 1,600 at the moment. So we're not far away. But definitely a good target will be to try and get it before the end of the season. I think quite tricky. But definitely also something that you guys are very capable of doing. And please also share the video too. All these things really help as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are legendary for joining this video. And as always, I'll see you guys soon. Take care, everyone.